So, greetings everyone. As you can see, we are going over another wonderful real board game. Though the names in the upper left and upper right hand corner may confuse you just slightly. I mean, who has heard of Hanin Boshue? Nobody! Almost nobody. Mostly nobody, I would say. You might ask yourself, has he recently beaten Shibano? Is that why I'm going over him? Maybe he's a up-and-comer that's taken his first title. New, 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 new. This game is a little old. This game's a little bit on the old side. Just a little. I think this game in particular was played in 1898. So, alas, not a recent game, but that is why I picked it. Because believe it or not, some people... Some really, 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 really crazy people out there don't always like going over the latest and the greatest Go games to have been played in the last couple of months. Some people like to look at older styles, and that is completely alright. Because believe it or not, Go was not always played the same. It's true. It's true. It's hard to believe sometimes, but... Believe it or not, it is true. And the game that I'm going to go over today is a great example of this. Just fair warning, if you are in love with fighting and killing and craziness spreading across the entire board, this will not be the game for you. No, 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 no. But I think you'll enjoy it anyway, especially you basics crowd people that like looking at direction of play and shapes and stuff like that. Ooh, you, you are going to love this game. You are absolutely going to love this game. For the record, Lost Jack says he was not alive back in 1898. And that is exactly what someone who was alive back in, 19, in 1898 would say. So I'm not sure if we believe you, Lost Jack. So the game begins off immediately with Black taking a 3-4 point. Gonna find it hard to steal his 3-3s three now, won't ya? But don't worry, because this is played before the Bleep Bloop eras. So there's no fear of that. White takes a 4-4 four, four point in the upper left-hand side, inviting anything and everything. Not taking a diagonal and doing away with the cross. So I do like that. Instantly, we see something very, very different from what we would expect to see in most games. Nowadays, we would expect to see a corner being taken, maybe even the other one for a cross fuseki. Instead, we have an enclosure focusing on territory. Okay, okay. White has big decisions to make now. Could stay on left side of the board and invite Black to try to build. Or could go into a diagonal game. Diagonal game is a bit more interesting. It says that we are going to now, quite possibly, get into a territorial game. Reason for that, just in case anyone's a little bit unclear, and I haven't counted a few people who were. Reason why this is more indicative of a territorial game than this one is because when your stones are all on one side of the board, it's really easy to just like add a third, for example, and tie that together, thus making a framework that's going to probably try to expand out into the center at some point. If you've got something like this on the other hand, it's hard to find another point on the board where you can tie up your first two stones unless you try to do something crazy that we would definitely never, never, ever go over in the future like Diagonal Sanrin, say, or something crazy like that. So, alright, playing a bit of a territorial game. Interesting. We are now inviting our corner to be taken away, says Black. Clearly not up on the latest and greatest ideas of Go, which is all about the points, all about the territory. Look at this guy, not taking them points. Silly black. Silly black. We have learned so much since then. 
Wide, of course, immediately steals the corner. Now here, here is where the game definitely shows its age. Because we used to be living in the era of fast frameworks. We're kind of going back towards the era of territory and things like that. But we used to be living in the era of, fa uh, the era of fast framework where we would expect maybe an approach here and try to build us up into the center or something. Instead, Black just takes a bit of a base for himself. He does back off there, Pace and Fox. Now, corners having been obtained, we can actually find the next move because of basic series, in which we listen to opening theory, and now we know we are going to contemplate sides before center, and wouldn't you know it, there is one side that is very, very large. Q10 suggested. Interesting choice. Q10 would be more influential, thus inviting your opponent to approach and threaten to go under. Do you defend that? I don't know. Nowadays we do it because we don't want to be pincered or allow for shoulder hits or caps or things like that later on. But here he plays low. He just takes away the extension that black wants, nice and simply. Good idea, though. Good idea. Corner still open. Oh, you mean this one? Ah, you mean the enclosure. There's one problem with that. If we do take an enclosure here, we allow our opponent to extend from his enclosure and block our enclosure. So black gets to do two things simultaneously. No, he means C3. What is C3? All right. So Black's move needs to decide what to do. I would expect an approach over here. However, I would be wrong. Turns out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of territory is not exactly the largest point on the board, believe it or not. It is in fact the top side. So Black approaches and extends from the top of the board. Now you might be saying, but wait a minute, I know an even larger part of the board, and that is the area between these two stones. That is true, but that doesn't allow black to expand. This one lets him expand and approach. This one lets him potentially expand and approach. So this side is larger. Why backs off, which is quite OK. Don't see it very much nowadays because of how easy it is to, whoops, how easy it is to play white stones for him, how easy it is to take both of the 3-3 three, three away, as well as approaching here later on. Because of this approach and the corner shenanigans, we don't usually see this too often. Nowadays, we prefer to do this one because at the very least, this loses a lot of its value. Black backs off. Take and dem points. Take and dem points. The question once again remains, where is the largest point on board? What do you think? Where is largest point on board? Black just played here. White now has Sente. It's really, really obvious. Really, really obvious. C13. Um, you want to back off low to space. That would be a little bit strange. I would expect this one, actually. Backing off high into a small knight. Maybe kicking. But more than that, we take an enclosure to go with our extension. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, easy peasy, easy peasy. Nope, sorry, Remini for white. It is now Black's move again. 
this group is okay for now. The top is okay for now. And wouldn't you know it, because white backed away high in the upper left-hand corner, we actually have a really easy, no-brainer move for black's next play. And that is to approach, because he backed off high. He backed off high here, so why wouldn't we approach? This is threatening to undercut, threatening to come out, it's threatening to get a base. Simple, simple, easy peasy. So white must respond. And the timing of these moves are actually pretty, pretty nice. Pretty nice. He approached. When you have this approach here, there is an expectation for your next move for white, right? White's expected to do what against this move? I'll give you a hint. It's not defend the corner. What are we expected to do? Pincer. Exactly. We're expected to pincer. Okay, great. So we're going to get pincered here. Bonk. Pincered. Now, that gives rise to a very nice move for black next. Now that white is trying to claim an area here, black says, all right, go claim it. Go claim that third line territory for yourself. And so he does. Nice and easy. Do 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 do. Look how simple these moves are. Oh my God, are they even? Are are these players even strong? I mean, come on. Look how many moves into the game we are. We're not even seeing a single fight. Not even a single fight. Nothing's really under attack. Is this? What is this? Doesn't make any sense. Black uses Sente to expand. And now the next move, believe it or not, is still proverbial. Believe it or not, this next move is straight from Proverbs. What do you think, uh, what do you think it is? How good are your basics? Something with C8 stone? Nah. How strong are your basics? How strong are your Proverbs? It's very simple. He is going to Hane the head of three stones. This prevents our opponent from extending again, which is nice. It cleanly cuts off that, which is nice. And if he ignores it, we can harass the whole bloody wall. So congratulations to the Rebenes. I was giving other people a chance to respond. So nice and simple. That will obviously trigger a run from black. Because if you imagine this stone as white, suddenly it becomes difficult to imagine this stone living. And we know that for another proverb. Well, not proverb. Kind of like a rule set, I guess you would call it. Whatever. The whole sector line dealio. With this move, we are now firmly behind enemy lines. So if we're not careful, we're going to get capped and attacked. And that would be bad. We also want to keep our enemy stones from connecting to each other. We also don't want to be surrounded. So it's obvious that white's going to come out. We still don't want to be surrounded. So we're going to respond on top. Defending ourselves. At that point, we have to be a little careful. We have to be a little careful because suddenly you can see that if we get a move like this in for black, 
it's very, very large, given that the top is va is like fastly turning into territory, right? Quickly turning into solid points. So it's no surprise, being mindful of this, white extends. Black uses sente to try and settle. White plays a shape that just scared every single Q player that ever looks at this game. Because of, oh my god, all the pokes. Oh my god, the pokes! The pokes! The pokes! What are you going to do against all the pokes? The double don shape? Exactly. You don't got to be afraid of it, man. Your opponent tries to cut you. You got him right back. So instead, we're going to skedaddle. Now, white's got to be a little on the careful side, because rather than poke at the cutting points, or poke at that shape, wouldn't you want to just play something cute like that instead if you get the chance to? Wouldn't that be cute? Oh, that'd be cute. It's also exactly why we are defending. And black responds. It's like, all right, we defended. So it's time for white to build. And now I want everybody to get this next move. Everyone gets this next move. Anyone that does not get this next move is demoted to 10Q. Everyone that does not get it, you're demoted to 10Q. Next move for black. 10 keys of promotion. So I'll give you a hint. This is a small move to care about. A small stone to care about. Think not about the order of the moves, and instead think about what's on the board. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of Q11s on the board. Exactly. Rebene, congratulations, you are not 10Q. Dragonian Fly, congratulations, you are also not 10Q. Neither is Lost Jack or Nizumi 8. Very, very, very simple. Shoulder hit. Nice, easy reduction. See, ladies and gentlemen, if you follow the basic series, you too can get into a time machine and become a professional player. Ugh, look how peaceful this was back in the day, man. Look how peaceful this is. Now, some of you are probably saying, why? Why is it we don't play this way anymore? Blame Lee Chang Ho. It's his fault. He used to have a peaceful style. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, he did. And what took it out? Aggression. Early fighting. Completely, completely put the final nail in the coffin of this style of play. Because we know it tends to crumble to serious aggression. <sighs> Was it, it, was, it was a good time, though, man. Oh, it was a good time. Just making shape. Look at that. Retreating to space. Oh, so good. Lightly poking at shape points, because if you can imagine this stone is black, that is a shape point right there. Look at that. It's like we're not even playing Go. We're just answering freaking Go problems. Isn't that amazing? Defend stone. Doesn't like, overextend and instead connects on back. Oh my god. Defends his two space extension. Nice, nice, nice. We don't want this to be black stone again. A lot of the time, these moves from either player are 
really asking themselves, where does my opponent want to play? Like, what's the biggest move for black right now? What's the biggest move for white right now? What do they want to do? And here we can see this would really start to grow and surround here if we don't come out, right? So what does white do? White comes out. Look how freaking simple that is. Making my some shape. Making me shapey, shapey, shapey. All of the shapies. And defending. Okay, so we're we're gonna defend clearly. So we defend like zoo. And then we're making eye. A little bit like zoo. Because we're all peaceful people. Peaceful people everywhere. Threaten to cut through. I don't want you cutting through me. So I will respond in a way that takes away the cutting point. Ooh, good shape. Good shape. Then Black's like, well, this is a game about territory. So I'm going to defend my top. Just keeping my territory. White says, well, Go is called the surrounding game, so I'm just going to surround you now. And Black says, okay, I want to keep that eye because I need it to live. So there we go. So simple. Simple, simple, simple. There's a gap here. We have Sente. We're not going to play here because it's Gote. Even though they are playing simple, they are still thinking about what Sente when, do the, when does this person have it? When does that person have it? What has to be responded to? Where are the big moves? Like, Sente and big moves. And then some shape thrown in as a, as a little, uh, I don't know, as a sweetener. That, that's, that's this game. That's what this game is. So, all right. Even if they play simple, they are not 20k. That is true. That is true. Black counter pokes. White says, well, that was rude. What if you never see your family again? And then black pokes. White says, uh, no. We're busy over here. And black responds. To which white comes out. That poke is incredibly strange. That poke, I don't mind saying, is incredibly weird. Leaving the bottom right-hand corner so white can reinforce? A little bit odd. A little bit odd. But now black needs a new home. And new friends. Extending up. We have to create the cutting point if we're going to try to live. And white blocks. Black is now threatening to cut. Because just real quickly, if we cut, we Atari down, it's dead. So we don't Atari down, we play this way instead. White comes out over to here. Black gets to play the Atari. White connects. Goes back in Hane. The clamp doesn't matter because we can drop since Black can cut that off and these three stones die. So in case you could not keep up with that, that is why this exists. So white defends against that variation. Now the cut doesn't work. Wait, what? Oh, this almost looked like fighting. <laughs> Indeed, it almost looked like fighting. It almost looked like fighting. No, 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 no. It's nice, it's nice and peaceful. It's nice and peaceful. Don't worry about it. It's nice and peaceful. We're, we're going to try to play this nice and peaceful go later on, by the way. I'm sure it's going to go terribly, but we're going to try to play this nice and peaceful go later on. 
We'll see how long I can hold out before I succumb to the desire to kill. All right, so we're alive. And the honey means we connect and knock stones around. I'm really good at doing that. Black says, I'm alive. And then white says, I'll respond to you now. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. This was played without Comey? I don't know. Um, I'm not up on the whole Comey when things going on. So all I know, this was 1898. I'm, I'm not sure. No Comey? Okay, Peyton. Sir Biggly Wigglesworth says no Comey. So I, I believe Sir Biggly Wigglesworth. Black tries to come out. White's like, shame on you. You're staying inside. And Black says, okay. I used to be inside. And White says, now don't cut me. Gonna make sure that my stones are nice and strong. And Black says, well, then I'm going to bring my stones back to life. And then White says, okay, well, then I'm just going to go and uh, cut this right over here, like so. Easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Build up the right-hand side. Defending the territory, because territory is territory. Territory is real important, mind you. So we just secured our corner. Nice, nice, nice. White uh, now is given Black Sente, and he makes some pokies. Not Sente, because this is all very, very strong. So White grabs some more territory for himself. Or herself, not going to assume, in 1898. So, black connects. I have to not let his opponent break in. My aggressive side needs aggressiveness. I know, does this... Isn't this, like, so ridiculously passive? Like, alright, taking my points. Don't mistake Shiwe's calm play as a person that couldn't fight at this stage of life, he was the strongest player in Japan. All right. I will point out, if I haven't done so already, that Peyton Bigsby knows best because he's one recommended this game for me to review. He is the Shuhei expert, and he has brought this glorious person to our attention. Backing off, so this isn't Sente. 100 point co incoming. <laughs> You're so aggressive. Oh my god. I feel like after this, I need to play They Are Billions. Honey. La la la. Just relaxing. It's a nice game of go. Gonna go ahead and poke this a little bit because this is getting a little bit big. Gonna make sure that it's not too large. A rich man shouldn't pick quarrels? Exactly. Exactly. Black plays the honey. And white says, uh, is there Aji there? And I don't, I ran out of stones. All right, and black backs off. Now we've got some shape issues. Black, whoops. Black connects. So white comes on out. 
And black is forced to respond. Now, here's the thing with this game. For those of you uh, fighter types out there, and there, I, I can, I'm reading the chat. I know there's one or two of you out there. What's interesting about this, what's interesting about this is white offered to get into a pretty uh, nasty fight if black tried to commit against these probes. So white is looking for shape issues, right? And he is offering a little bit of something something, right? Just like the, the play over here, right? This was a threat to kill the corner by protecting here and connecting up. So good for points, good for shape. If black didn't respond, the corner would be dead. The cut's kind of the same way. Threatened to kill. Here, we have Mi pokes. So we're, we're being, th we're threatening, right? We're threatening. And then when your opponent calls no joy, take big moves. Solidifying the corner uh, eye, I guess. Going back and responding to White's little poke. Or Black's little poke, sorry. Nice little turn. Black sides to connect on up. So White gets a stone. Black says, now I'm going to poke through you. And White says, no, you're not. You can probably hear the wind in the background. It's quite windy today. And White is being poked at. And White responds. And poke. And white responds. This way is a bit more interesting to respond to. Because it created like an extra uh, shaky point. Black backs off. White sides to connect. Nice and simply. Kind of surrounding this group. But it's alive, so it's fine. White just takes the next largest point. Black Ataris. And white says, yeah, that's too slow, too. And clamps. Black backs off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There have been uh, some tornadoes breaking out already. That is true. Not sure which way Atari is. He doesn't Atari at all. My bad. He goes back and plays over here. And white connects. Now black makes a little bit of an oopsie. Black plays the attachment here and says, these stones are mine. Black says, these stones are mine. White takes, thus threatening to push through. Black says you can't do that. White says, and this is going to hurt to look at. White says, are you sure I can't? Black says, please stop getting rid of all of my territory. 
Oh my god, my plates are disappearing! So, that hurt a lot. That's like a lot of free stones killed. Like, this can be pushed through, that stone's gonna die. There's like, really really deadly endgame in here. But now, white smells... White, white, white smells weakness. White's like, are you connected to anything anymore? Like, anything. All of this game, I've been protecting my shape. Have you been doing the same thing? And Black says, yeah, I'm connected. And White says... What does White say with his next move? How many of you can get it? How many of you can get it? Next move for White. Next move for White. What's the question? There's a really, really good next move here. I'm seeing who can find it. It's really amazing. G12. What is G12? G12 is this line. Oh, cutting through here? And no. F8. No. Pushing up through there? Is F8 pushing up through this one? No. E9. Uh, nope. It's so good. Guaranteed kill. Nothing to read out. You're just dead. There's no, like, contemplating, can I Atari this way or that way? No, you're just dead. Nice and simple. An absolute clear kill. Black says, can I do anything here? White says, no. Black says, are you sure? White says, pretty sure. Well, then what? Black says, what if I cut? White says, I don't care. To be fair, this is actually kind of tricky. Because if we Atari here, then we Atari there, right? This gets taken, we throw in, we Atari, we connect back, and then this group is potentially disconnected. So he's not just randomly throwing things in. You can kind of see what he's aiming for. And he responds to this with a protection. So he gets to Atari out. And Atari take and Atari and connect and semi Atari, which of course leads into an actual Atari. And it is at this point that Black resigns because White's group is completely fine. White's group is completely fine. Nothing more can be done there. GG. Oh, sorry. I got yelled at on YouTube for that. No, no saying GG. A lot of, lot of really good basic things can be learned in a game like this. That was a very different era than the one that we're in now today. Now, y'all might be saying 
this kind of go ain't exactly what we see in our dice. And you would be correct. You would be correct. We see a very different game nowadays, don't we? Now, if you've been living under a rock for the last five years, you might not be aware that Go has definitely changed. Very big style changes. And we're going to look at one game that is a great example of those style changes right now. All right, here we go. So Black is name is... His name is Lost Jack. All right. We've got Mr. This message is brought to you by wait, the cool, wait. creamy taste of original A and W root beer. <laughs> have one today. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, indeed. Indeed. Thank you very much there. There, Lost Jack. I appreciate your 100 bits. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I literally get more. Uh revenue in things like that than I would ever get running ads. Just saying. Just saying. It's a little bit different. Then have a few more bits. And have a few more bits. <laughs> Thank you, Krapus. All right. So that was a game from the late 1800s. 1898 to be in fact. Now, the game that we are going to look at here, as you can tell, is played by people who are still alive. Yi Seidol versus Mr. KG. Ooh, Mr. KG. I remember, oh, I remember when KG was like my favorite player in the history of ever. He had a style that resembled what we just saw. Some, like, he could fight, but when Mr. KG first came to my attention, it was because he had a very, very solid style. It was kind of patient, kind of attacked other people who were stupid enough to pick fights with him. I remember the first reviews of his we did. His style has changed since then. All style has changed since then. Let's see if you can figure out why or what about it has changed. Let's see. Let's see. You'll need to pay close attention. Blink and you'll miss it. So opens up 4-4 four, four for both sides. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. You said it'll grabs a 3-4 facing. Interesting. Maybe Chinese framework then, huh? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Double four fours for Mr. KG. So we don't really know what he's up to. Could be territory, could be influence. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Black approaches. I guess we are going to go into a Chinese. Here we expect our opponent to back off and then maybe go into a low or high Chinese Fuseki. We probably wouldn't go into Kobayashi because Kobayashi is lame and boring and solved and bleh. No one likes this. No one likes Kobayashi. Kobayashi. No one likes the Kobayashi. Only people who like the Kobayashi are the amateurs. Amateurs play the Kobayashi. And that's really about it. That's really about it. Not what we see nowadays. Not, not, no, just not what we see nowadays at all. What we do see nowadays, though, is the kick. <gasps> the kick. How many times, how many times have you told, this is mostly for Don players, have you told a student, don't kick the approach? I have. I have. Then the AI came around. And the AI love them territories, man. Ooh, yeah. They love them territories. And so they like kicking. They like kicking because it gives them solid points. And that's all that we care about now. Is those solid, oh-so-yummy points. Been told and have told others. Exactly. 
We all have to shut up and apologize to them now, don't we? Now, it could be argued that the kick is okay here because it forces your opponent into a Kobayashi-like variation. Kobayashi is rather solved. So, maybe, maybe it's all good. You could be like, Hmm, yes. I do believe this is a very good idea now because this is now Kobayashi and I know how to deal with it. Hmm, yes. Could say that, could say that. But if you were going to say such things, you would say, I'm going to approach or approach, or approach. But that's not what we're seeing now. Instead, like I said, it's all about them territories. It's all about them territories. And this fool's trying to take some right here. Oh, we're not going to stand for that. Now you might be saying, but what about corners? What about sides and center? I'm still learning direction of play. What is this? Sorry, that just went out the window. That went out the window. So we're going to start a fight through the beginning of the game. And we're going to keep this fight through the beginning of the, through the rest of the game. Forever and ever and ever. Yeah, on move 10. You're going to start fighting forever now. That's all there is to it. That's what we're going to do. Them late 1800 style of play? Uh-uh. No, 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 no. We ain't going to do that. So, white is just moving to live. Now, it could be argued, it could be argued, before we get off on too much of a tangent here, it could be argued that maybe this stone just sucks. Maybe we can't extend that far away from a two space because it's too easy to reduce it. Maybe we should stay low here. Maybe we shouldn't even play here again and we should make a framework or take the 3-3 three, three point, or something larger. That could be argued. That could be argued. In response to this, you could also say, you know what? I'm not going to get into a fight. I'm going to let my opponent respond and connect on back. And then proceed to play elsewhere. We don't have to actually get into a huge fight here. But I'm not going to fault Mr. Yi Siddle for doing so. So plays here, jumps up. And just goes to live. Just goes to live. Black responds asking, can I go into your corner? And what says now? Then black says, well, then can I cut through you? And what says now? And sure enough, I will congratulate Black for settling. It's not bad. It's not bad. However, the variation that we are seeing here, which he is using to settle with, which he is in fact using to settle with, runs into a slight problem. Runs into a teensy tiny little problem. And that problem is we have a cutting point now. So even after we Atari and connect, the problem that we have here is we didn't really make any territory from that.
white pushes up because there's still a cutting point right there, which sure enough must be defended, which allows white sente to keep coming out, to keep coming out. Just like so. And white has to, or black has to protect. Which allows someone to get a base. And here is the problem with the whole situation. By destroying this, white actually got a pretty reasonable, very, uh, re pretty reasonable sequence. This is actually a pretty reasonable sequence because now these two corners are looking to be equal. We picked up territory here and we have Comey. That's pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable indeed for white. Whether you thought that this was too early for white or whatever, fact remains he got in, he got, he destroyed settled in Sente and didn't really even give his opponent much in the way of compensation. Tari and connect. Whoa. Apparently I put my stones too close together. Make room, fellas. Make room. Make room, I say. There we go. Sente and then takes for himself. It's clumpy indeed. Yeah, I, I got it. It's all good. It's all good. Looks pretty. It's fine. All right. So at this point, I will have to say congratulations to White. He got ahead in the opening. Congratulations. I don't want to congratulate him, but congratulations. Stupid bleep blooper. Ah. So if you are in a position like this, and your opponent invades, I would recommend just playing the diagonal or the attachment and letting him go back. Because fighting this does not seem intelligent. Black tries to surround. White's just like, uh-huh. That's not going to do anything. It's like, all right, that's not doing anything. I'll, can, I'll approach. <sighs> but at this point, you know what's going to happen, right? You know what's going to happen, right? We're just going to kick. Oh, yeah. We're doing it again. Uh-huh. And notice the immediate change in Black's response. <laughs> He's like, you know what? On second thought, maybe I'm not going to play High Stone. <laughs> maybe that wasn't such a great idea. I'm going to play low instead. Yeah, third line this time. Oh my god. So, alright, that's cool. But, white is a bleep blooper. So he's going to take more points. Like, look, look, at the, look at the easy strategy on display here. So, like, we're just taking the territory. We're immediately ruining Black's attempt to grow. And then with Sente, we're going to take away his territory again. Pretty straightforward. Very easy moves. All of these moves are easy to find, I tell you. You could place these 
moves on the board with a paint roller. Now Black's gonna drop down and take a happy little wall that faces this happy little stone that's on the happy little third line, which is not all that happy, because that makes it a lot easier to reduce. True story. True story. Yes. Lost Jack needs to watch more Bob Ross. White extends. Playing a Jisaki. Do, 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 do. Hits the stone. And comes up. Okay. 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 A lot of variations just dodge that's good that's good pokey pokey poke and blocky blocky block and white plays the haunting black of course block that White asks to kill off some stones, and Black says no to that. Connects. Now there's a cutting point. Seems that Black is being forced into that middle. We're being forced into that middle. Do we have to care? Do we even have to care when you think about it? Because when we ask ourselves, what is threatening on this board? It's not really this area, right? Because, you know, white can come in from this way. White can come in from this way. White can come in from this way. A lot of different ways white can poke into that center. So if that is not the real threat. The real threat is this dropping down and like expanding into the middle. So that is the direction that white comes in from. Simple little shoulder hit. Do 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 do. Responds, and while we're at it, we take some forcing moves. Just some forcing moves. Black tries to counterattack for good reason. I mean, I, I mean, realistically speaking, we wouldn't really want to see something like this. Like, if we actually give three lines of territory away to our opponent while we're getting two, when this was originally the area that we were trying to build up, oh my god, the amount of pain that we're going to feel. Oh god, that's going to hurt. Oh, that's going to hurt. That would, that would not be good. That would not be good. Sue. So, Black says, no, I will not go down like this. And we get the connection. And threatening to kill off a of one stone. But White's like, um, okay. Apparently you don't like the corner. Mr. KG is, in fact, white, yes. And black connects. As does white. Bye-bye corner. We hardly knew ye. Threatens to poke at all the things. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Wait, white move, not black. Pokey pokey poke. Pokey pokey poke. 
Pokey. Po oh, wait, was that the right move? It was. Good. I just assumed. Threaten to go through. We are now in a life or death situation. Life or death, indeed. Gotta watch your stones. All right. <coughs> Does this mean white has no base anymore? That's true. No base for white, you're right. Looks pretty bad for black. Mm, 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 mm. White secures the whole no base for black thing. And black says, does that mean I get my corner back? White says, it does not mean that you get your corner back. You stupid fuel. And black says, does that mean I get to kill your stones? And white says, no, that means I get to kill your stones. Co accepted. Gonna go and take. Now we need a threat. Who can find a threat on this board? Need to find a threat? Need to find a threat? Who can find one? Who can find one? We need a big threat. Ooh, big threat. Big threat. The ladder's not a big threat. Who can find a big threat? N17. With N17. N7, N7, N17. Uh, no. Not severe enough. Just living? New. C3. P.O. Nope. Living in the corner, not large enough. Black says, I will kill your corner. How do you like me now? To which White says, oh, I like it, I like it just fine, thank you. That was nice. Dead corner. But also dead stones. This seems to stay a little bit larger. It really depends on, like, how much of this area Black can keep for himself, right? Really depends on like what's going on in this little area here. Pick another fight because that's all we do all day, every day. No Hane this time. We're just building. White says really. Black says really. It's like, well, if you're just trying to build, I know where you want to build. Therefore, I'm going to start reducing you. Grab base. Attack said base. And extend. Now we did that in Sente. We can build a huge corner by killing some stones. And Black says, "No, you cannot. I will, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll prevent it. I'll prevent it. It can't happen this way." To be fair, this is a lot of territory. That is an amazingly large amount of territory. It's just that this is large too, and this corner here is pretty dang solid. With, with, solid with the points. Sorry. I will congratulate White for fixing shape. And gets poked. And takes more points. Not much we can do there, so time to go into a corner. And white says no. 
No drop downs, no connections, no weird stuff. Proverbs don't matter anymore, like walls are influence. I know, right? Trying to reduce. Might as well respond with maximum effort. I hope you have it is now time day. to try and bamboozle our life. way into massive reductions. Please, just let something work. Let something work. I don't care what. There's some territory. Oh! I'm just Sam, 50 bits. Hope you have a fabulous day as well. Thank you for your bits there, Sam. Nope, I'm just Sam is not Lego Sam on KGS. She is different. I'm just Sam is an extremely nice player that I met while I was in Australia. And Descent. Thank you for your sub, Mr. Ninja. 27. And Black connects back up. So far getting not really anywhere. We're kind of just noticing that these this territory is very much secured. And we're now making heavy shapes. So, we're... we're I can't believe it's from Lee Seidel, but he's flailing. He's flailing, boys. He's flailing. Look at this. He's just flailing. Trying to connect. Trying to save our stones. The bleep bloop style is too strong. It's too strong. White says, you know what? You can't connect up. I will kill myself to kill your stones. That right there. That there is a sign of someone who really hates you. He's willing to get himself killed in order to keep you dead. So, all right. Black comes up. White does too. To be fair, those stones are larger. Happy anniversary, bats. Thank <laughs> you for your 12 months in a row resub. There's Zelusu. White, black says, can I connect underneath? Please? White says no. Whoa, I just ruined stones. Threatens to push and cut. White is not impressed. And now this is where you have to be absolutely certain you are reading correctly. Because if these stones die anyway, I'm pretty certain you quit your career as a professional Go player. Right? I mean, that, that's the only way, only way forward at that point. Isn't it? If, like, you played all of this and then these stones still die? Now, luckily, it looks like there's potential here. Dying in Gote coming up? Uh, no. I don't think he dies in Gote. Otherwise, you would have heard that Lee Sidol has retired. So, alright. We have the Atari. Okay, okay. That was forcing. We don't play White's moves for him. Atari. And white takes. 
threatens to live. Okay, okay, threatens to live. Not gonna let that happen. So I'm going back to Co. Wait a minute. Um, I have a question, chat. Time out. What the hell? I have a question. Why do I have four captured stones, all of blacks and both balls? <laughs> uh, I'm confused. They're all, sorry, they were all in the wrong bowl. There we go. I don't know how I did that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. It's all fine. You see, what was happening is Mr. KG was putting his own captures in his opponent's bowl because he felt that he needed the extra points. That's what was going on there. Okay. It's left out of the game record. You can't find it. But trust me, that's what was happening. Okay? Just just believe me. Just believe me. Alright, so black retook. White connects. And now black has to not be dead. So he threatens to kill the corner. Is there supposed to be a white on the other bowl? Crap, there is. We don't talk about it. And we have an Atari. And a connection. Again, threatening connect underneath. And just like that, it looks like we'll be okay. This looks like time Suji. One of the ways you know you're looking at two humans playing is when you see Time Suji. The bots, man, they don't need that stuff. But he was using it to read out a connection. White Atari. Black drops down, threatening to kill again. White takes. Forcing a connection for black. Like suit. And white has to live. Otherwise, that would be a pretty bad way to die. And last but not least, we get our connection. All right then. Nicely connected. These are off the board too. All right. And last but not least, connect on out nice and solid. Excellent, excellent, excellent. At this point, it's just mostly a reduction in the center stuff for black's potential. Forcing things like the ladder to make sure that's not going to go anywhere. Poking into the middle. Not because there's really any points there. What we're really doing right now is just kind of making sure that um, if we can get a few points in the middle, that's great. But if not, we want to make sure this is Dame, because if we're not, like, here in the center, then our opponent's going to be, and then he'll just make points in there, right? So now that the corners are pretty much all taken care of, the sides are very much taken care of, we're kind of going back into the centery stuff. And that that's pretty much why. Who said B was flaking? Wait, what? What do you mean? Anyway, 
continuing onwards. Getting poked. And last but not least, resigning. Oh, I said flailing, not faking, not flaking. So yeah, there's too much territory for white. Too much territory. Had to resign. For those of you who are curious about the score, and you can be, I, I, I would understand why you are curious. It is, it is an understandable thing to be curious about. Black is probably going to be ahead by... Or, sorry, be down by, like, about 20 points. Well, here's the problem, right? Let's say you keep responding. Let's say you respond here, right? You don't want the Atari down to go through, so this is going to be responded to, right? So, okay, great. That was Sente. We're now picking up points in here. Yeah? You've got things like this that you can play later. You've got... I don't know. Any kind of middle move you can pick up for an extra couple of points. It's harsh. So the question is, where can you push back on White's territory? Right? Where can you push back on White's territory? This is sealed. This is sealed. Nothing we can do here. Nothing we can do here. Very little we can do here. And the best we've got is just poking around at the points that we already... That we have to, like, make sure he doesn't get. So where can we grow anywhere for Black? No. We have to steal off what we have. So that, that's that's big issue. So yeah, this... This did not go well. Sneaking bleep bloop. Yup. Attack for move 10. Just go from attack into attack into attack. Yeah. Take away all the territory, man. Take away all the territory. What? We can't possibly do that, sir. If we do that, then he gives it. We get the influence to our opponent. It's fine, man. We'll just take the influence too. We'll attack everything. We'll invade the corners, and then we'll take territory in the middle. It's absolutely insane. There's no way you can do it. And he did it. So yeah, that's the end of that. Press F to pay respects for Isidol. This was a brutal freaking game, and it seems to. I ah. Uh. Yeah, you can't, if you play the star point, if you play this move, and you get invaded, you can't fight it. You know what the dumb thing is about this? You know what the dumb thing about this whole thing is, though? Here's the dumb thing about the whole thing. Here's the dumb thing about the whole thing. Like, in this position... I've gone over, in basics, why this isn't territory, right? I've gone over in basic videos why this isn't territory. Because white has the connection. And if you deny the connection, exactly what happened in this game freaking happens. You can try to jump out. What happens if you try to jump out? Well, then your opponent can freaking live. Like, I've gone over this position before. In basic games, and then Black's like, "I got an idea. I'm gonna play that. I'm gonna play that out." Like, why? You're insane. Why are you fighting this? It's early on. You've got like crap you can make. But he just couldn't bring himself to like play a passive move here, either here or here. He's like, "No, screw him. We're gonna kill him. I don't know how we're gonna kill him, but we're gonna kill him." But he couldn't. And then he's like, all right. And then the top came around. He's like, all right, you're right. That doesn't work. We're not going to do it. I'm backing off low. 
Yeah, someone give someone give Lisa a little, uh, link to my basics lessons, please. That'd be great. Thank you.